I'm Greg Jamison, and the title of my talk today is Indus Seals in Gujarat, New Insights into Carving Styles, Production Techniques, Chronology, and Regional Variation in the Indus Civilization. Before proceeding, I'd like to thank the institutions and individuals listed on the screen, especially the Archaeological Survey of India, Professor Osko Parpola, my friends and colleagues in the Department of Archaeology and Ancient History at the MS University of Baroda for providing me access to some of the images used in this research. I'm also grateful to Professor Mark Knoyer for all of his ongoing support for my research, and especially the Center for South Asia and the organizers of this year's conference. The Indus or Harappan presence in Gujarat has been known for a long time. It was originally described as a result of colonization of Indus people from the Indus Valley proper. Current archaeological research suggests otherwise. Most Indus sites in Gujarat have both Indus and non-Indus material culture and collectively demonstrate considerable regional variation in various forms of material culture, settlement planning, and other cultural aspects. This integration has been described recently as the result of an increased movement of people, goods, and ideas that economically and culturally integrated formerly distinct regions such as Gujarat in a manner that parallels other ancient and modern globalization processes. Seals provide evidence of both integration and regional variation within Gujarat, and among other Indus sites and regions. Studying seals from Gujarat is useful to learn more about both Indus organization and material diversity. This research is driven by a series of questions focusing on inscribed Indus seals from Gujarat, including how are Indus seals from Gujarat different from those from other sites and regions, and how are they similar? To those from other sites and regions. What patterns and carving styles and methods are present in the corpus of published Indus seals from Gujarat? Is it possible to identify stylistically distinct seal groups that represent different artisans and workshops from Gujarat? Do similar patterns apply to inscriptions on seals from Gujarat? And finally, what does the evidence of seal production and use in Gujarat tell us about the Indus culture as a whole? To investigate and attempt to answer these questions, this research has proceeded by tabulating, classifying, describing, and examining the distribution of seals from Gujarat using a variety of different published sources, including most significantly and recently, the outstanding excavation volume from Dolavira, edited and compiled by Sri R. S. Bish and his colleagues. Following this, investigations of diachronic variation, patterns and connections among seals within and among different sites in Gujarat were undertaken. And this was largely facilitated or built upon through the creation of a sample, a smaller collection of published seals from Gujarat for comparative analysis. The methods for investigating these questions included formal, stylistic, and metric analyses of seals in the sample, the identification and examination of stylistically coherent seal groups, comparisons among seals from Gujarat with materials from other regions to try to demonstrate and understand both variation and links, and finally, preliminary and ongoing analyses of inscriptions on seals from Gujarat and comparisons with materials from other sites and regions. Seals have been recovered and published from 11 sites in Gujarat. Approximately 379 have been reported in various published sources, depending on which are consulted and the definition of what a seal actually is, as opposed to similar types of inscribed materials, say, for example, ceilings, seal impressions, and tablets. You can see here that the overwhelming majority of the sample, or 
all published seals from sites in Gujarat are dominated by the sites of Dolavira and Lotal. And this is a reflection both of the fact that these are larger sites and they have been more extensively excavated. Collectively, the seals from Gujarat are quite diverse. They come in a variety of sizes and shapes, were fashioned from a variety of different raw materials, represent different iconographic themes, and of course were crafted using a variety of different carving styles. Most of this research focuses on square stamp seals engraved usually with animal iconography and a short inscription. And it's also important to note that several of the seals from Gujarat probably post-date the integration era of the Harappa phase. Looking at the entire corpus of published seals from Gujarat, we can see that square seals are the most common form. However, other forms and types are present. We can also see that the iconography is variable. However, the unicorn is the most common type. Both of these patterns mirror what we see in the Indus more broadly. And it's also important for me to note that during the course of this analysis, one of the most significant variables is state of preservation. There are many, many more seals from sites in Gujarat that are fragmentary, poorly preserved, and this can make classification and analysis quite challenging. Since the unicorn is the most common iconographic motif on seals from sites in Gujarat, it is the most useful for exploring variation and searching for patterns in carving styles and techniques. Looking more specifically at unicorn seals from Gujarat, we can see even with a cursory glance that they are quite diverse in terms of their carving styles, their techniques, and their proportions. Some of this variation may correlate with diachronic patterns, change over time. Other sources of variation include the style and skill of the artisans and workshops that would have produced them, raw materials, and perhaps even where they were made. Some of the unicorn seals, particularly from the sites of Dolavira and Lotal, have very unique carving styles that to date I have not been identified at other sites. This and unfinished seals suggest some level of local production at both sites that was largely distinct from that that which took place in other sites and regions. Some of the other variation observed among unicorn seals from sites in Gujarat may likely be associated with chronological changes. Unfortunately, not all of this unicorn seals from Gujarat have strong contextual information and records. So it is not possible to confidently be able to determine chronological changes on the basis of current information. However, thanks in large part to detailed stratigraphic excavations at the site of Harappa, conducted by the Harappa Archaeological Research Project, it has been possible to develop a seal chronology at that site, which can track changes in seal carving styles over time. And in this research, it has been possible to use this seal chronology from Harappa as a comparative tool to examine changes in carving styles over time among sites in Gujarat. This work is still underway and is very preliminary, but what I would point out right now is some of the same patterns that we can see in terms of chronological changes in seal carving styles from Harappa seem to apply to at least the site of Dolavira in Gujarat. And this is something that will be explored in greater detail in future research. Returning to the first research question concerning how Indus seals from sites in Gujarat are different from those of other regions, to date, I have identified several ways in which they are distinct. These include raw materials. There are some raw materials that appear to have been used to make seals from Gujarat that are either not common or otherwise distinct from what we see in other sites and regions. Same with morphology, size and shape. 
There are definitely some unique iconographic elements among seals from Gujarat that are different from those of other regions. And of course, also the carving styles, which I'll talk more about momentarily. On the other hand, there are also some clear, easily identifiable ways in which Indus seals from Gujarat are similar to those from other regions, including iconography, many of the same iconographic motifs, representations, and themes that we see on Indus seals from, say, Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro, like the unicorn motif, the zebu bowl. They're present on seals in Gujarat as well. As a corollary to that, we can also see some similarities in carving styles of these seals between sites in Gujarat and those of the Indus Valley, especially Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro, which I'll talk about later in this presentation. Finally, there's also some clear similarities in terms of inscriptions, more specifically duplicate inscriptions among seals from sites in Gujarat and elsewhere in the Indus that represent shared uses of the Indus script. In this research, these similarities and differences have been investigated by formal analyses of a sample of seals from Gujarat, which then also included comparisons with materials from other sites and regions, specifically Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro. A total of 106 seals, about 28% of the total published seals from Gujarat were included in the sample for formal analyses. And the two primary variables for inclusion in the sample were simply the state of preservation and the publication of high resolution images, which were absolutely necessary to conduct the formal analyses. All of the seals in this sample include both animal motifs and script, and based on these two features, most likely date from the integration era of the Harappa phase. The unicorn was the most common type, as previously mentioned. However, seals with other motifs were also included in the sample for formal analyses. The formal analyses was undertaken using these published images and the methodology developed and used in my PhD dissertation research. It consisted of two parts. The first, comparative analyses of various compositional elements that make up animal iconography. The second, formal metric analyses of the seals and their component parts with a specific emphasis on ratios between length and width. This was undertaken in order to answer some of the other major research questions, including what patterns and carving styles and methods are present in the corpus of published Indus seals from Gujarat? And is it possible to identify stylistically distinct seal groups that represent different artisans and workshops from Gujarat? Using this method or these methods, it has been possible to both identify pattern variation and stylistically distinct seal groups that likely represent different artisans and workshops from Gujarat. Formal stylistic and metric analyses are the primary tools that I use to try to address these research questions. This classification of stylistic and metric groups was also based on my earlier dissertation research, specifically ethno and experimental studies focusing on replicating Indus seal production technologies using tools and techniques that would have been available to Indus craftspeople. Working with professional stone carvers in South Asia and analyzing their replica seals, I determined that seals made by the individual artisans tend to have a number of shared stylistic and metric features in common that can be used to distinguish them from those of the products of other artisans. Based on this research, seals with at least seven shared stylistic attributes and five similar metric proportions have been classified into groups thought to represent different workshop or artisan carving styles. 
specifically the combination of different consistently shared stylistic attributes was used to identify these stylistic groups, which were then examined both individually and by comparisons with materials from other sites and regions. The goal of this formal analysis is to link pattern variation in indices with the artisans and workshops that made them. This is a particularly valuable tool in studying and learning more about Indus seal production since we have very few stratigraphically excavated seal production workshops. The distribution of these seal groups helps us understand how production was organized and varied both in Gujarat and beyond. And by doing this, we are able to uncover and explore evidence of both regional variation and integration during the Indus civilization. To date, I have identified a total of 17 stylistic groups comprised of 39 individual seals, which includes some of those comparative materials from Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro. You can see from the data that most of the groups are small. They consist of four seals or less, and the most common iconographic elements are unicorns. This mirrors the results of my dissertation research and is simply a reflection of the fact that the unicorn is the most common type of seal found at most Indus sites. The groups demonstrate varied levels of stylistic and metric coherence, and they also consist of complex and diverse distribution patterns. This also mirrors the results of my dissertation research and provides new insights into the organization of seal production and use, regional variation and integration within sites from Gujarat. Five of these stylistic groups are comprised of site-based groups, four from Dolavira, one from Lothal, with no stylistic parallels at other sites in Gujarat or elsewhere. In other words, the seals in these groups contain combinations of unicorn carving styles and metric proportions that do not have strong parallels from any other sites or regions. I argue that these represent local site-based production and carving styles and therefore represent regional diversity in Indus unicorn seal production strategies. There are three more groups that are comprised of seals from two different sites in Gujarat. And these, I argue, represent regional stylistic groups from Gujarat. As with the other seals I just got done mentioning, these also have unique combinations of carving styles with no parallels at other sites. One of these groups consists of three seals, two from Bagasra, one from Dolavira. The other two are pairs. The first contains one seal from Lothal, another from Bagasra, and the second, one seal from Dolavira and another from Lothal. This also provides further evidence of both regional variation and unicorn seals, but also connections between sites in Gujarat. There are also four groups that demonstrate stylistic links between Dolavira, the largest site in Gujarat, and sites in other regions, especially Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. Each one of these groups consists of one seal from Dolavira and one seal from another site, either Harappa or Mohenjo-Daro. This pattern of interregional stylistic connections in seals is not limited to Dolavira either. In fact, there are three additional groups that contain one seal from a site in Gujarat, either Bagasra or Lothal, and another from Mohenjo-Daro. All of these groups depict unicorn seals, and they are also all classified and distinguished on the basis of unique combinations of unicorn attribute carving styles. Finally, there is one group of three seals, one each from Dolavira, Harappa, and Mohenjo-Daro, that show stylistic connections among the three 
major urban settlements. None of these seals are identical copies, nor should they be. All of them were produced by hand, and they are very small. However, they do demonstrate clear similarities, not only in their carving styles, the ways in which the various elements of the unicorn are carved and, and decorated, but also in their proportions. And this, I argue, represents a workshop carving style. The major significance of this particular group is that it is the first example of stylistic links in seals that I have identified among three of the major urban centers of the Indus. As I mentioned earlier, these stylistic groups are not limited to only unicorn seals either. There are two other examples of stylistic groups from Gujarat that depict other motifs. The first is this unique pair of seals that both depict or contain composite three-headed animal motifs. They have very similar carving styles, orientations, and even proportions of the animal's heads, their bodies, their tails, even though there is some variation in accompanying iconography and inscribed characters. The seals were found or recovered from different contexts and areas of the site of Dolavira. This is another thing that I hope to continue investigating in future research to try to learn more and gain better understanding of distribution patterns among the stylistic groups. This is an extremely rare motif in Indus seal iconography. Dolavira is not the only site that has this composite three-headed animal motif, but it occurs very infrequently at other sites, including Mohenjo-Daro and Kalibanga. And you can clearly see here that the two seals from Dolavira that contain this iconography are stylistically very distinct from those of the other two sites. This suggests a local carving style at Dolavira, but is also evident of connections with other Indus sites and regions. Finally, there's one last group, stylistic group, uh, that can, is comprised of a single seal from Dolavira and another matching one from Mohenjo-Daro. This depicts the famous zebu or humped bull motif, and it is the first stylistic group I have identified with this particular iconographic motif. It complements my earlier and recent research on interregional distribution patterns of stylistic seal groups that don't only or exclusively consist of unicorns. I'd like to briefly wrap up this presentation by talking about evidence for shared uses of the Indus script among seals from Gujarat. Preliminary analyses of inscriptions have identified duplicate uses of the Indus script among seals from both Gujarat and other sites, which of course provide further evidence of integration and connections. A pair of seals from Lotal, pictured here, have the same inscription, the same sequence of inscribed characters. However, they are very diverse in terms of their carving styles, their proportions, and perhaps even their production techniques, their tools used to make them perhaps representing the same message carved by different hands, tools, or artisans. There are two other pairs, one pair from Dolavira and Deselpur, another from Dolavira and Kirsara, that also contain duplicate inscriptions. However, you can see here quite clearly that there's a lot of variation in the types of seals on which these inscriptions occur, different mediums. And I find the use of the shared writing across different mediums, perhaps made by different artisans, an interesting pattern because it does suggest shared uses of the script, but that these could be applied across different mediums and probably created by different artisans. We can also see evidence of duplicate inscriptions interregionally from a site in Gujarat and another site elsewhere. This pair of seals from Lothal Mohenjo-Daro have duplicate inscriptions, but otherwise are quite distinct. The carving styles of both the animals and the inscriptions are quite different from each other. This suggests they might have been produced by different artisans, but for similar purposes, or at least had shared meanings in terms of their inscriptions. 
There's also four seals from three different sites that contain the same inscription. One from Lotal, one from Bagasra, and two from Mohenjo-Daro. These are even more interesting because they are different seals and much more distinct carving styles. And again, when we see patterns like this, even with the analysis of the inscriptions and, and the use of the script, we can see evidence of both integration and variation. There is also evidence of multiple seals with duplicate inscriptions from multiple sites, further evidence of integration. However, in this case, they clearly have different motifs and carving styles, and this is further evidence of uh, variation, excuse me, as well. Seals from Gujarat are important contributions to the corpus of Indus inscribed materials and collectively demonstrate lots of variation. However, some of this variation is patterned. There's evidence for site based, regional, and interregional stylistic groups. And formal analyses are useful to identify and examine the organization of Indus seal production and use in Gujarat. Taken together, all of this research can provide new insights into what we know about the Indus civilization as a whole. And it largely supports what scholars of the Indus have been saying for a long time, that it was a unique Bronze Age civilization characterized by both integration and variation. Both this integration and regional variation in various forms of material culture and other cultural aspects represent and reflect ancient globalizations as described in a recent paper by Dr. Brad Chase and his colleagues and earlier by Justin Jennings. And I strongly feel that thinking about the Indus in these terms helps us connect the past with the present. Major goals of future research on Indus seals and in our understanding of the Indus civilization more broadly. Thank you very much.